Hey Garage Fabbers, I had a brain fart. While converting the Pinklet's rear suspension from a triangulated forelink to a parallel forelink, I took the opportunity to redesign the link bar tabs on the axle so that the bars would be angled slightly at ride height. The purpose is to try to gain a little traction off the line. I reused the lower link bars the original builder made. The air springs are mounted to those link bars, so I obviously don't need to do anything with the bag mounts, right? And that's the fart, the brain fart. By changing the angle of the bars at ride height, I changed the angle of the bars at all heights, including when the frame is laying on the ground. On a vehicle with air suspension, when the chassis is laying on the pavement, the space between the upper and lower bag mounts should be equal to the height of a fully deflated bag. The Slam Specialties bags I'm using have a squished height of three inches. So this space should be three inches. Oops, I've got six. Three inches, too much. This would still work, but some lift is wasted. Why? First, a little bag math. Different size bags provide varying amounts of lift. You can determine how much lift a bag has by subtracting the bag's fully collapsed height from its maximum height. For example, the eight inch bags I'm using have a collapsed height of three inches and a max height of 12 inches. 12 minus three is nine. These bags provide nine inches of lift or they would if the bag mounts were set up properly. Lean into this one, it might get confusing. Since my bag mounts are three inches too far apart, there is three inches of bag movement that will never be used. I mean, the frame is laying on the ground. It can't get any lower, unless you wanna start digging. So you've gotta subtract that three inches from the bag's total lift of nine inches. This truck can only lift off the ground six inches. Now that I'm saying this out loud, I'm realizing I should have just left it alone. My wife never would have known. Six inches ain't so bad, but I already cut the bag mount off, so I guess I'm making bag mounts. So if you're in the middle of building an air suspension or planning on building one, the upper bag mounts will be pretty close to the last thing you do. That means your notches are already done. Your link bar cross member will already be done. Your link bars, done. Pan hard bar or Watts link, done. Your lower bag mounts, whether they're on the axle or the link bars, done. Your rear suspension will basically be complete, except for the part that lifts the chassis off the ground. That's where we're at with the pinklet. If it's not already, position your axle where it would be with the wheels and the truck frame laying on the ground. If you don't have your wheels yet, or your frame is on jack stands like mine, or both, you're gonna need to do some math to determine what your laid out axle position is. If you need help with that, hit me up in the comments and I'll walk you through it. And if this video is over a year old, read the comments to see if your situation has already been answered. I take a lot of pride in answering every last comment, but as the subscriber number goes up, that's getting harder and harder. And if I'm being honest, it's not sustainable. But please don't confuse future unanswered comments as a loss of appreciation. I'm still reading and I still appreciate you more than you know. Have you got one of these yet? If not, go check out the last video and make you one. Or cut a wood block to the size of your bag's deflated height. It's important that you have something similar because the upper mounting plate needs to be mounted so that it's parallel to the bottom plate, it's directly above the bottom plate, and it's spaced away from the bottom plate at least the thickness of your deflated bag, preferably a touch more. If there's not enough space between your upper mount and your lower mount, your bag can bottom out and your truck won't be able to lay frame fully. Also, bags don't like to be bottomed out. Slam Specialties actually has a bump stop built into the bag, but I heard once that if your bag fails and Slam Specialties sees that the bump stop was used, they won't warranty your bag. So what's the bump stop for? If you're using pre-made bag mounts, Bolt your bag mount to the top of your mock-up bag. You might need to trim your mount so that it fits. I don't like to use pre-made mounts because they generally have to be modified so heavily that it's easier to just start from scratch. So if you're doing that, grab some cardstock. Soda boxes or poster board will work just fine. Measure the distance between the frame where the upper bag mount will attach to the outer edge of the mock-up bag and using a square 
Mark that distance away from the edge of the cardstock and draw a line. Make sure this line is 90 degrees from the edge of the cardstock. Measure the diameter of your airbag's mounting plate. Set a compass to half of that measurement and draw a circle. Then using the same center point, mark a second circle the size of the overall bag diameter. We're gonna use this circle to make sure the bag doesn't rub the gussets we're about to make. Using a square, connect the sides of the larger circle to the edge of the cardstock. The square is important. These sides need to be 90 degrees so the side gussets bend properly. Find the center of the circles you drew earlier and draw a line through them that's 90 degrees from your other lines. I'm gonna connect the inner circle to the sides and this will be the front edge of the upper bracket. We'll be done with the top plate as soon as we mark some mounting holes. If you've still got the templates you made in the last video for the mock-up bags, you can use those to mark the holes. If not, let's do it again. Measure the space between the mounting holes. Set a compass to half that measurement and draw a circle using the same center point from the circles we drew earlier. The points that the circle crosses the horizontal line are the center points of the mounting bolts. Mark them. Now for the airport. Draw a line across the centers of the mounting bolts on the bag. Then measure the distance from that line to the center of the port. On the cardstock, measure that distance away from the horizontal line and mark the vertical line. Your port can now be located here or here. It often depends on how you run your lines, so you don't have to decide right now. You can drill this hole later. I'm going to put the ports closest to the frame. Last thing, let's add some 45 degree gussets on both sides. Cut out your fancy new bag bracket template, score the lines for the gussets, and bend them. Nice. Let's try it out. All right. That's pretty good so far. I'm gonna have to contour this back edge a little bit so that it fits these different shapes on the notch. And this support bracket looks perfect. This one, not so much. This one's not even touching anything, so that one's pretty useless. But it looks like the notch here ends almost right in line with the edge of the top bag plate. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bend this a little further in, but I'm gonna bend it up instead of down so that it's in line with this edge right here. And we're gonna see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. We got a good bracket there. And now that this one's pointed upwards, we got a lot of support on this side too. I think I'm good with it. I just need to contour this back edge a little bit. And then I'm gonna turn this template into wood. And then I'm gonna turn the wood template into metal and we'll be good to go. If you've been watching GarageFab for a while, you've probably seen that every time I make a wooden template, I trim 3 16 of an inch off of all the edges of the template so that when I trace it with a plasma torch, the end part is the correct size. But you might have noticed I didn't do that on this one. What matters is the distance from the back side of my original template to where the bolt holes are, but the overall size doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up this backside with the metal pieces I cut out, mark the holes in their proper position, and you'll notice that it's slightly larger than the template, and that's okay on this one. It could actually be three or four inches bigger, and it would look ridiculous, but it wouldn't cause any problems. I'm gonna use the original cardstock template that's already bent in the proper locations to mark where the bends need to be on the metal plate. I don't have a press brake yet that's capable of bending this 3 16 inch plate. The way I bend thick plate is to score it most of the way through with a cutoff wheel so that I can bend it by hand and then I run a weld bead across that score to strengthen everything up. It's not really any different than completely cutting the pieces apart and then welding them back together later. It just makes it a lot easier when you're by yourself. 
if all the pieces are still connected so that you can hold the entire assembly on with one hand while you weld it on with the other hand. If you'd like to use the score method to bend your plate, it's important that you know that your metal will bend away from the score. For example, this bag bracket has two gussets that bend in opposite directions. This gusset bends this way, so the score will be on this side. The other gusset bends this way, so the score will be on this side. If you follow this advice, the score will open up and create a channel for the weld. If you ignore this advice, the score will close as you bend the metal and prevent the metal from bending more than just a few degrees. I marked both places where this plate is gonna bend, and I probably should have only marked one so that I don't get confused. So this piece needs to bend down, so it needs to be scored on this side, so I'm gonna leave that one there, but the other one needs to go the other way, so I'm gonna get rid of this one so I don't make any mistakes, and then I'll remark it on the other side. So this plate gets scored here and here. The new bag brackets are on and everything is looking really good. What do you say we pop some air springs in there and see how it works? Right on, that'll do, donkey. These bag brackets were pretty simple. I've got another set of bag brackets to do on my buddy Keith's C10 that won't be nearly as straightforward. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. Hit the like button if you found value in this video, and if you really want to help out the channel, share Garage Fab with someone you think will enjoy it. I appreciate you, my friends, and until the next one, Keep moving forward.